il est extrêmement important de rappeler qu'il s'agit d'une maladie multifactorielle dans laquelle les but linked to genetic factors or other nature factors. This process that is leading uh, from arteriosclerosis, i.e. from the formation of a plaque of atherome in the arteries, uh, and then generates the formation of a clot that is going to plug an artery and uh, link to infarction with the complex process with an inflammatory but also fragility of the plague part very important this it very often leads to trouble of the uh, rhythm of the uh, heart re- be- heartbeat leading to sudden death so it's a very important topic that cannot be only linked to one cause Now, I want to talk about the place of saturated fatty acid in this process and particularly look at the light of the light data that we have on literature, particularly on epidemiology, that are as a complement that Mr. Legrand just mentioned on the role of fatty acids, particularly saturated fatty acid within this disease. I'm not going to come back on the physiological road, since it was particularly well illustrated here. We're talking about the iconographic role. It's a cult movie in France, illustrated here with Lino Ventura on, uh, in the center of the screen. So before making you work to make you smile on the roles of fatty acids, that is, you see that a very simple manner I told you saturated fatty acid, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acid all had an energetic role that was mostly polyunsaturated uh, fatty acids for the structural role, also a functional role that was very well summarized by Professor Legrand. And those fatty acids, even though they're not essential, are useful. Even though they're not indispensable, they're useful. And I say often, it's like me. I'm not indispensable, but I'm useful, since I'm doing now a presentation. Now, if we erase whatever was uh, not essential in our society, we will erase a lot of things. Many things are not essential, but very useful indeed. Let's remind you also that um, fatty acids are linked throughout our nutrition by visible oils, grains, or fats that come of an animal origin or by lipidic animal elements linked to vitamins A, E, D. And I won't have time to detail it by the tocotrienol, which is one of the form of vitamin E contained in palm oil, but also to carotenoids that are very near vitamin A in palm oil. Fats also contain cholesterol or phytosterol, whether they're animal or vegetal. And I have to remind you that fat is very important because it carries taste, as was said before. And a nutrition that is not very fat is a food that is less satisfactory. Now, Professor Anstra will talk, will detail much more than I do about this. I was mentioned rapidly earlier. And I will go fast on it, but I would like to recall you that if we compare fatty acids between themselves, and here you see palmitic, smiritic, and lauric, and that you look at the effect on cholesterol, LDL, which we called poorly before bad cholesterol, because LDL is not bad at all. It's very useful indeed. What is bad is the excess of it. When you look at the facts uh, on LDL, There are much more cholesterol providing that unsaturated af- acid, af- as- yeah. but they are helping good cholesterol, HDL, and it's uh, heightened on a very important manner, but uh, saturated fatty acids. If you want to have better good cholesterol, either you eat unsaturated acid or you drink wine, but you can do both, by the way which is happening with the consumption of cheese in France, because since in cheese, we eat a lot of cheese and we eat, uh, drink a lot, HDL is very high. Now, is it good? 
Well, it's interesting to know that in this very old article in the Lancet, we had a study that was an ecological study comparing countries between themselves, comparing death rate and average consumption. Those have not a real scientific value, those studies, but they're an indication. You see that the more you consume CSI, which is an index that is cholesterol and saturated fatty acids, the more you consume them, the more you have death in those countries. First of all, there is a paradox in France. Second, it's not that much of a paradox because we know why. And thirdly, this study doesn't have much value because it compares things that are not comparable in between themselves, and particularly at the time, since it was data from the 70s and the 80s, we have a vast difference of economical growth in between Finland, for instance, and Dominica Republic, as an example. So the studies are just suggesting that the manner that countries are living is impacting health, and of course, nobody can doubt it. It also says that we're relatively different. So for a long time, we had studies showing that it was a link in between the increasing consumption. It, those are migration studies, by the way, showing a link in between the change of nutrition habits with Japanese that are moving to Hawaii or California, you see that they're consuming increasingly lipids, saturated fatty acids, and the mortality and the coronary death is raising as well. This doesn't mean that there's a link from cause to effect. A lot of things can change too. Second comment, the uh, essay FA in the studies are considerable, since you see here that we're more than twice the average that are noticed in France today, and we are eating a lot of SFA, 66 grams a day, which is a lot. And it does generate a little raise of cholesterol, and it is linked to coronary deaths that is increased. We also had the seven countries study and in those countries um, that were compared, when you compare Japan, Greece, and so forth, and uh, effectively where the consumption of fats is uh, higher, you have a raise uh, of the cholesterol level as well as mortality. You still notice in a country such as Greece, when you eat 37% of Greece, Finland 37 too, you have death rates that are different, but many things are different too in, within those two countries. So it's showing us that food and lifestyle are important. It doesn't show that there is a relation of effect to cause. It means that you have to pay attention to your diet. Now, when you look in the seven country study, which is the same study, on 25 years background and follow up, when you see the relationship between the coronary mortality and the uh, cholesterol level in blood, you realize that there is a relationship in, um, according to countries. It's a growing relation, actually. The more you have cholesterol in, on 25 years follow up, death rates are growing, but not in every country. This is US and this is Scandinavia. If you look at the Mediterranean countries or Japan, it is not raising at the same level of cholesterol. In other words, cholesterol is not enough to explain the cardiovascular diseases. There's also protective factors that are different according to the various countries. Very important to notice this, otherwise you'll have poor science and poor public health. Lots of the studies were done beyond the one I showed you. And in the 80s, 90s, uh, to, um, to, to southern, we saw the studies that were a little more nuanced, particularly the nurses' health study, very well known in the US, one of the greatest um, studies of the time. You see that in this particular study, no statistic relation appears for palmitic acid. This relation doesn't exist or almost exists for osteoric acid, which is very interesting. 
but not very high. It's only 19%. And when you add it on 12 and 18, it's a raise of 10%, which is really not very big. So already the question were ar arising because the proportion of elevation was not drastic. Now, later on, retrospectively, when you look at the former studies, the most uh, famous Framingham study, which was the first epidemiological uh, study for coronary diseases, at the time already we were astonished because there was not necessarily a relationship between SFA and cholesterol. That this relationship between cholesterol and CHD were not present in women and in a certain population, you had a relationship in subgroups that was very weak, very low in between SFA intake and CHD incidence, only for the percentage of fat. So a few doubts were already arising on those questions. I will show you an old study that often was considered as a study linking fatty acids and the risk of coronary disease. And as a good scientist, I read the articles that are published. And when I look at the detail of them, that's not what I read. Look at this uh, study in Western Electric Study, which is the French, uh, the American EDF. 1,900 men followed by 20, for 20 years. So you see that the intake in energy for whoever knows nutrition are an average considerable, 3,180 kL per day, up to 6,000. As a mean intake, we have us 2,000. The absolute value for intakes of SFA, 10% of the population is eating more than 161 grams of fat a day. Considerable that. Even in this study, you have a low statistical relationship for a particular index, but not for SFA. So you see that major consumption is not to be wished for, but not at the level that we're fearing or we thought. And it's a context of a very specific nutrition of people eating a lot and eating on a very unbalanced diet. Many other studies have been done since, and this one, of course, I mentioned, the seven country study with intakes in SFA in Finland at the time that were too high, 24% of the total intake, 25 years old. In fact, later I'll talk about it. Another study showed that the risk was, um, and then you will see 17% in the nurse, and the reverse one, 7%, and the British uh, studies that were zero uh, percent. So you're going to say you, I was arbitrary in my choices. Well, no, not at all. What I wanted to say is come up with studies, uh, um, the Seri Tirano, that is showing uh, that when you take the sum of all the studies in a meta analysis, uh, all the prospective uh, studies on the link between SFA and CHD, well, at the bottom line, you have no statistically significant, significant link between CHG and SFA consumption. So this study is, of course, was a major shock and showed that this relationship was not uh, real. Now, other studies brought uh, other perspectives on the issue, because in fact, it's a complex relationship. You shouldn't say that there is nothing. You should say that it's complex. Here is a study that was published in 2009, a few years ago, trying to link in prospective study what was happening if uh, you substituted the SFA by polyunsaturated fatty acid. You see that globally, the substitution that is a prospective study, let's not forget, is quite favorable. However, you see that when you have substitution with monounsaturated acid, it's not favorable. And when there's substitution by glucid, it's not favorable either. So in fact, reducing SFA is replacing them by what? That is the key question. When you say something to someone, eat less, well, then he would less more something else. So what does he eat instead of it? Here, 
in the same line and with the Jacobson team showed that when you were replacing fat and particularly saturated SFA by glucids, um, you had, according to the type of glucids um, intake, a diminution of the uh, risk of cardiovascular disease or a raise. So people who are substituting SFA by CHO, which are um, carbohydrates, glucid of in high in index, which is the Western diet, you have a raise of 33% of risk. So what is happening when people are reducing their SFAs, or what is happening when they eat a lot of them? Eating a lot of SFA, like in uh, Western studies showed, or like in uh, the other studies showed with a lot of glucids, uh, is not to be done. Why? So let me come back on this image that Philippe Legrand showed that he described very well that when you eat glucids, you're capable of um, generating a fatty acid. And let's stop at the palmitic acid on the level of the liver, because this lipogenesis is a liver lip, uh, lipogenesis. But now, it's not going to be, because you have the uh, breast here, but it, in, in the physiological situation, it's the liver that is concerned. Well, the liver is going to export SFAs that is generating, consuming too much glucids. Let's not say that glucids are poor nutriment, but too much glucids in certain conditions are going to lead to this. And too much glucids always comes when you don't eat enough lipids, and particularly not enough saturated lipids, because lip saturated lipids are about 42 percent of our intake. Now, Professor Legrand mentioned this study that was also very perturbing for a scientist. It's observation done by Mozafarian that showed that when you ranked by level of SFA intake, check very carefully now because we are checking the studies in a very precise manner, look at the level of SFA intake. It's in quintiles, we're in percentage, right? Three, two, five, five, two, seven, and so forth, up to 16%, which is a relatively low level. As you saw, sometimes we uh, reach 24%. And you see in total fat or in SFAs, we're on a level that's quite low. Now, we were expecting with uh, coronary condition women followed by th for three years that the more SFA they uh, intake, the more there was a progression of arteriosclerosis. Well, the reverse was actually observed. The more they ate SFAs, the more you had progression of arteriosclerosis, the least you have. When I read the article for the first time, I had to read it three times. I thought for sure they made a mistake, but we now understand why. Those women who are consuming very few lipids, they're raising the quantity of lucid. And you see in this slide that the quantity of glucids are very important. Now, we're talking about women who, because they have a coronary condition, have very often a metabolic syndrome, and they have a capability that is very important, much more than the average, particularly if they're sedentary, to um, generate grease in their liver. And they will always be saturated, as Professor Legrand showed, and those fats are then exported in the blood vessels. And they're going to generate, and that's a study that was led by Lefebvre, when we reduce the intake of SFAs, you're reducing LDL cholesterol, but you're raising to glycerates, and you're diminishing HDL. Very well known, this. It's obvious. And now, for a long time, we said it was important. In fact, it's key, because on top of this, not only those people are going to have high triglycerides, but they're going to modify the nature of their LDL, which is qualified as bad cholesterol, that is only bad when this cholesterol, LDL, is in small particles, like here. Those are major LDL, A. Those are B phenotypes. And when you talk about B phenotypes, it's bad. And when do you have small LDL? Well, you have small LDL when 
the percentage of fat in their diet is weak. Therefore, when the glucid percentage is high, so that was very well shown by Dreon's team. Here is a study showing the link in between a triglycerol where the uh, and LDL, as small as they are, the more the triglycerides are going to be high in the blood. When you have a consumption that is not enough of lipids, particularly when you have metabolic syndromes, and those are experiences when you feed some uh, patient either a very fat diet or a very low fat diet, and you see then when the diet is less fat, you have a raise of poor, bad LDRs, the small ones. And it goes very far at this, because when you have very low fat diet, then you have LDLs that are very, very small, as before you didn't have any. So of course, those are experimental diets and are good ones. It's just for an experience to understand what was happening. And here, another study done by Grossel, very well known also, that is showing that when the intake of glucid is high, i.e. the lipid intake is low, when in this case, you have much more LDL that are small and are considered as much more dangerous than the large ones. So you see the situation is very complex, much more so than we thought. We always think that ideas are simple. In fact, we have to be more precise in our uh, digs. Did we have intervention studies showing that uh, the FSS are bad or are good? Well, we have a lot of intervention studies. And how do you proceed uh, to lead an intervention study? Do you tell people, instead of having FSS there, you're going to eat polyunsaturated uh, Acids and for a long time we thought you could eat them as much as you can, and we generated unbalanced diet. Peace on earth ratio were very high, about two, as it should uh, really ideally be under one, largely be under one. So what happened? Well, from time to time uh, we observe a drop of CHDs, but rays of CV are non CVD deaths. <laughs> Um, rates of total mortality from time to time are diminishing with very bad studies. Only one uh, study showed uh, a drop that people ate more f uh, fish, more soy oil, and stopped smoking. And then sometimes they showed a very significant uh, um, raise of the coronary risk when they lo uh, lower the um, FSC. That was a study that was mainly very um, criticized. Uh, that was done in Finland, whereas they um, intervened. And then after the intervention, so this is a slight improvement during intervention. They're stopping here. And after intervention, they follow up people. And the people that d died the most were the intervention group with a P on S ratio that was raised. Not la Now, other studies were published this year. Uh, the Sydney study that is. Uh, could be criticized, but however, you see that within this, and a PNL uh, report very high, the group that has a um, higher level of more of death rates is a group uh, with a raise of F poly polysaturated uh, fatty acids. Why is that? Because, as I said earlier, and I didn't show you the studies, it would be too long. In this case, um, when you have a diet that is poor in SFS, you are raising the generating of saturated acid by the liver. And when you have a high fat, high SFA diet, which you shouldn't do except on an experiment, well, in that case, you diminish the transport of SFAs that are coming out of the liver. And you're also de decreasing the lipogenesis marker uh, when you the, the, for the liver doesn't need to generate so much and is entering less, which is quite rational. And in 2013, the study that I just showed uh, made a meta-analysis of all those international studies to see whether, by chance, the studies that seemed rather in, in, um, negative versus vis-a-vis uh, -vis the SFAs were confirmed or not, or if it were a reality. And you see here that this uh, meta-analysis uh, looking at the death of uh, CHD or the risk of CVD, 
not con considering only the actions that are selected or omega-6, omega-3 ratio didn't show any benefit to the substitution of SFA by other fatty acids. Now, you had even more interesting studies uh, that were led, Women Health Initiative, there's an American study, where we, they said, we're going to try it with people who have nothing to see whether eight years later they die more when they eat less fat. Well, tough luck, it's a catastrophe, in fact. 48 Southern American ladies um, with two groups of women. And you see some of them were asked to reduce their fat consumption a lot, particularly in SFA. After eight years, no benefits were observed with those 48,000 ladies. Worse, in the women who had already a CVD background, you had a raise of 26% of major CV events. Probably they were women that had a metabolic syndrome. So we're going to round up on a few notions to come back to palm oil and look at the French situation. Here is a picture of the prevalence of a, a C of E disease in France, which of course the French paradox, i.e. France is a country in Europe where you have the less cardiovascular deaths, way far from the other countries as you see here, by far, except my region in the north of France that is here, Whereas, of course, people have a, a diet and poverty that is different. However, France is the urban country consuming the most SFS. And if you compare to Germany, or Great Britain, or Greece, you're higher than they are. You're also higher than the USA, in fact. And we're really completely 16%. And we should count 17% if we want to refer to the real a and C, i.e., we have to count on the non-alcoholical intake with 17%. However, we have the CVDs rates that is the lowest. The explanation is probably linked to the fact that, first of all, the SFAs that we're intaking are also coming from milk. Second explanation, we certainly have a lot of protective factor, particularly of polyphenols. I will not uh, defend wine here. It would be inappropriate, but it probably plays a role. Now, let's check the facts now to conclude uh, and come to the last uh, slides. When you look at the comp composition that was shown before, we have, of course, a high uh, tenure in SFAs, but let's uh, compare it to cocoa butter, for instance, we're underneath, and check uh, versus butter. But butter is an excellent uh, piece of food, which you shouldn't do easy too much of it. And you see here, um, duck fat and, uh, and olive oil. So uh, in the bottom line, there's a lot of uh, similarities. What you have to highlight, too, is that within palm oil, you certainly have 50% of SFAs, but 50% of unsaturated fatty acid, half um, full or half empty uh, glass. So we can look at both. And in fact, what do you have? We have this half. But you also have to specify something that is not completely uninteresting, even though it's marginal. It's the place of fatty acids on glycerol. And, uh, and you see that on a glycerol, you have three uh, slots. One, two, three. So, sorry, there's a mistake. It's one, two, three. I can't see, but I think there is a mistake on the figures here. Shouldn't start with two. Should start with one. <clears throat> In any case, what you probably know is that in the intestine, you have a generation of uh, peripheric um, fatty acids, position one and three that are extreme, to the profit of a monoglycerate that is going to be ingested and absorbed as such. And within palm oil, it's not specific for palm oil. Cocoa butter is the same thing. Each type uh, of um, lipid will have a position that is completely linked to its nature, to its very nature. You have here uh, a generation of uh, peripheric acids, one, two, three, sorry about those numbers here, 
So a generation of peripheric uh, fatty acids, and, we're, and in presence of calcium, those peripheric uh, acids are going to be eliminated as soap. If it is an unsaturated fatty acid, it's quite interesting. If the peripheric uh, fatty acids are saturated, it's interesting too. And this is what's happening for palm oil. Since in palm oil, you have only 11% of palmitic acid uh, that is in position two, i.e. Cent uh, central position. So it's mainly oleic acid, and in periphery is palmitic acid or other fatty acids. So you also have a specification for each oil, but as you see, cocoa butter, it's the same thing. The periphery saturated, as the position to the center, is uh, rather unsaturated. So what do we know about pimols and the effects of it? And I believe that the two following presentation will um, detail my presentation. What are the pros and the cons and the weaknesses and the <coughs> strengths? The, the strength is that they're rich in SFA. Disadvantage, uh, it, it's also rich in SFA. Why can we say this? It's true that um, if we observe its um, tenure in SFA, it could be um, weakness, but it can be also strength because it's more stable, it's more solid. And something that we haven't mentioned so far, it's this. Uh, richness that allowed to reduce and suppress in France and in other Western countries uh, partially hydrogenous uh, acid coming from partially hydrogenated uh, oils. Very important this because they are trans uh, fats. Uh, here you see fat with two double links that are in position six. And we are partially hydrogenating. They disappear. And another one is persisting, but in a trans position. Now this trans position is giving to fatty acids a, a raise that is very important of LDL, and a dim drop of HDL that is very important. The trans fatty acids are completely wrong. Thanks to the introduction of palm oil, you could and we could diminish the trans acids. And this is very good news because it has properties that are functional, i.e. physical that is allowing it to have identical usage. Now, the studies that were done on palm oil would be specified later, which much more detail. We, have, we reviewed the literature. What did we find? Well, we observed, indeed, uh, that palm oil had uh, effects on LDL cholesterol that was a little bit superior that was raising, but less, sorry, than lauric acid or myristic acid, that it was raising HDL cholesterol, but less than butter or corporate fat or lard, that it was having effects that are very near avoid peanut oil or like sunflower oil, and that it had a lipid profile that was much better than partially hydrogenated fat that it was increasing LDL more than soybean or sunflower, but less HDL. We do not have any perfect oil, since perfection is within uh, the nutrition and not only of one food. So now, unfortunately, there are very few epidem epidemiological studies that are available. There's only three poor quality. They're good studies, mind you, but their capability of information is mediocre. We're talking about an ecological study here showing that mortality in Singapore and Hong Kong <coughs> is, no, is higher than Hong Kong, and that the um, animal ratio on plant fat is higher. It doesn't mean anything. Very interesting, but it doesn't prove anything. Second study, it's a study with survivors of uh, MI in Costa Rica, and those people who survived it have a consumption that is more important of palm oil. But since they're survivors, you can say that it's n <laughs> we don't know why they come out of it. So it's a poor value study. It exists, but doesn't have much value. Now, the third one was published too. Always ecological study showing that in developing countries, the rate of consumption of palm oil is parallel to um, mortality. However, 
this raise is linked to many other factors that have been changed, and you cannot deduce any conclusion. It's an ecological study. On top of it, Malaysia and Indonesia were not included in those studies, which is really a shame because those are the main countries that are consuming palm oil. So we do not have enough epidemiological studies that would uh, establish really the um, unharmful aspect of consumption palm oil, of palm oil. As a conclusion, we cannot say today that SFAs are responsible of CVDs. They are not responsible for cardiovascular diseases. It's a recession that we can make. <clears throat> I didn't say, of course, that you should eat too much of it. No. And right there, I said that their excess, high excess, in case of a Western diet, is not desirable. It's very logic there. You would say the same thing from uh, unsaturated fatty acids or polyunsaturated um, fatty acids, and particularly omega-6. Their replacement with a high intake of CHO is not desirable either because with uh, glucid, sorry, because the perturbation of the metabolism are not going to be favorable. Pymol doesn't induce a different uh, profile from monounsaturated oils, and it's rather more favorable than the other saturated oils. Palm oil has allowed to reduce the use of trans fatty acids, which is very good news, which doesn't mean that you should uh, consume too much palm oil either. What is a nutrient? You shouldn't abuse it in any case. Of course, we must also consider, because we don't have enough information, the source of SFA's studies that were done are not always highlighting. And now we have works that are going into that direction. We have to consider the source of SFA's, because certainly we have various effects in between the fats that come from milk, from meat, or from vegetables. And we have to come out of the idea that we're only considering SFAs per se. And as a nutritionist, we cannot encourage the excessive consumption of fat uh, food to, to sweet or um, to salty that, uh, as a snacks. That's just good sense and, of course, very rational. Thank you for your attention. Merci, professor, for toutes ces Thank you very much for all your detailed explanations. Have you got questions? We can take four questions from the floor. I have a, a short comment. Thank you for your really good com uh, presentation. I have a. I want to talk about uh, isomerian SN1, SN2, SN3, because uh, by biochemically speaking, this argument is 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 good, but uh, quantitatively and physiologically, it shouldn't uh, be held as a, 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 a in favour. Of palm oil, 90% of fatty acids are absorbed in 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 adults. So what was said here uh, it applies only to children. So uh, the, the concept of a uh, SNT uh, position, which will be absorbed, and SN3 that will be eliminated, possibly, then this can limit the absorption of lipids up to 20% in babies, but not in adults, apparently. Uh, because uh, physiologically, this phenomenon is reduced uh, to one uh, percent. Because when you change the SN2 position of uh, saturated fatty acids, you reduce the total absorption by one percent or two percent. So, d if you sign up for uh, palm oil consumption, do not use this argument. I know uh, what, what you said. I think it is true as far as bi bioenergetics uh, is concerned. But if you look into experiments where they compared uh, cheese and butter, where they, it's because the calcium uh, content is different, surveys showed that when you compare the two, uh, you, you, you saw that the, uh, butter uh, 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 caused more uh, cholesterol than than cheese. And also, if you take uh, cocoa butter and you add calcium, then you reduce the uh, percentage of cholesterol. So bioenergetically speaking, it is true. But uh, 
if you have calcium, then it can have a, a, a low but statistically significant uh, effect on LDL cholesterol. So this argument is is a, a minor argument, and it shows how diverse oils are as far as their nature is concerned. So you should you you should look into detail, really. You should look into uh, the, the way nature created things. You can st stereify uh, uh, fats, of course, but I, I agree with your comment, actually. Any more questions? to answer Professor Lagrand as well. Um, uh, the WHO set up an expert committee to look at the SN2 position as well, and they came up with a report in the 2010 WHO report to say very clearly that palm oil or vegetable sources of palmitic is different from animal sources because of the two position, and that's very clearly stated in the WHO report, just to inform Professor Lagrand. No, no, in terms of also physiological effects, they have actually studied that and they've said that vegetable fats are different. Okay, thank you. Okay, si vous, si vous n'avez pas les... Okay. Uh, last question, please. Uh, shouldn't one be uh, surprised that there is no epidemiological study in Indonesia and Malaysia? Uh, maybe. Um, um, I don't know whether there are any. Uh, but I think that the, the, there was no problem about this. What I mean is that uh, up until now, what was observed, but I may be wrong, was that naturally pe local people use a lot of palm oil, uh, non-processed, usually non-refined, and uh, cardiovascular disease uh, rate it, it was uh, up until recently very low in these countries. I think such studies should be carried out, but epidemiological studies should be carried out properly because if you start comparing things without taking into consideration uh, all as a elements as well that may have an impact, then you might demonstrate the reverse of what uh, the truth really is. Uh, maybe some studies have been undertaken already. I don't know. <laughs> 